subscribe tag tv youtube channel and press the notification button Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Uzma Jafri. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Thursday, the 17th of March. Muslim organizations in India's Karnataka observe shutdown against court's verdict on hijab row. Activists protest in Geneva to demand dismantling of terror camps in Pakistan-administered Kashmir. Sri Lanka signs 1 billion US dollar credit line with India amid worsening economic crisis. And now for all the details. Muslim organizations on Thursday observed a one day shutdown of their businesses in parts of India's Karnataka to register their protest over a court verdict that upheld a ban on wearing traditional scarf hijab in classrooms in the southern state. The court in its judgment said wearing hijab is not an essential religious practice and the government has the power to prescribe uniform guidelines. Muslim organizations observed a one day band or shutdown of their businesses on Thursday in parts of India's Karnataka to register their protest against the verdict by the Karnataka High Court. that upheld a ban on wearing the traditional muslim head covering hijab in classrooms in the southern state the high court on tuesday dismissed all the petitions over the matter and held that the wearing of the hijab is not an essential religious practice and the state government has the power to prescribe uniform guidelines the petitioners have said they will now approach india's supreme court khush nahi hai ki hum logon ke haq mein प्रॉपर तरीके से फैसला नहीं हुआ है उसी हम अभी सुप्रीम कोर्ट को अपील कर रहे हैं हम बिजनेस बंद करके बिजनेस सारा ठप करके अपनी नाराजगी दिखाने का मतलब क्या है क्या बंद कंटिन्यू अगर ऐसा ही होता रहेगा तो हम है ना हम लोग ये बच्चों का मामला है यार कम से कम दूसरों का होता तो ठीक था लड़कियों का बच्चों का मामला है The court verdict came a month after the ban was first imposed and followed weeks of protests by students, parents and the religious community. Karnataka ministers have urged Muslim female students who are staying away from classes in protest that they should respect the judgment and go back to school. Moving on. Kashmiri political activists staged an anti-Pakistan protest in Geneva on Wednesday to demand Pakistan to dismantle terror camps and stop exploitation of natural resources in its illegally occupied territory of Pakistan administered Kashmir. The protesters also highlighted human rights violations by the Pakistani establishment in the region and demanded the international community to intervene. <laughs> A group of Kashmiri activists held an anti-Pakistan protest outside the UNHRC building in Geneva on Wednesday and demanded Islamabad to stop denial of civil rights in Pakistan administered Kashmir and dismantling of terror camps in the illegally occupied region. The protesters urged the international community to intervene and take note of Pakistan's sponsorship of terrorism. They also raised concern over illegal land grabbing and exploitation of natural resources in Pakistan administered Kashmir and Gilgit Baltistan and said Islamabad has no locus standi on the occupied territories. We are forcibly divided since 1947. We are here to raise our voice to draw attention of the United Nations and international community towards the abductions, killings, extrajudicial killings and exploitation of the natural resources in, in our area we believe that terrorism is basically the biggest violation of of, of all human rights um, and we uh, disassociate ourselves from all these imposed groups uh, by pakistan like the jihadis The Jammu Kashmir International People's Alliance also organized a seminar to discuss the state of human rights in Pakistan and its occupied areas. The activist urged Pakistan must be held accountable for enforced disappearances and extrajudicial killings and denial of fundamental rights to people in its occupied territories. 
Amid soaring political temperature in Pakistan, Prime Minister Imran Khan has said that it was the responsibility of Pakistanis to come out of their homes and stand with the ruling party in Islamabad on March 27, a day ahead of the no-confidence motion against his premiership. While the government is trying to woo its allies in supporting it, the opposition is seeking to break the alliance. Pakistan's Prime Minister Imran Khan on Wednesday urged the nation to reach Islamabad on March 27 when his ruling PTI, Pakistan Tehreek e Insaf Party, is set to hold a massive rally a day ahead of the no confidence motion to tell the world that Pakistanis stand with the truth and are against corruption. Addressing a public gathering in his one day trip to Swat Valley, he lashed out at the opposition party, saying their leaders were sitting in Islamabad's Sindh house with bags full of money to buy the loyalties of government lawmakers. He claimed that the opposition has started horse trading to make their no confidence motion against his premiership successful. <laughs> A series of meetings of political leadership took place in Islamabad on Wednesday. PPP co-chairman Asif Ali Zardari accepted invitation of Mulana Fazlur Rahman, chief of opposition alliance PDM, to participate in the Grand Power Show on March 25. Zardari and the leader of the opposition in the National Assembly and PMLN President Shehbaz Sharif held separate meetings with Fazlur Rahman. The voting session on the No Trust motion in the National Assembly is expected to take place in the last days of this month. While the government is trying to woo its allies in supporting it, the opposition is seeking to break the alliance. In news from Afghanistan, millions of Afghans have been plunged deeper into poverty since last year's Taliban takeover, which resulted in disruption to aid programs and deteriorating food security. Many Afghans are leaving their homeland to immediate neighbors for better opportunities. Afghanistan's economy collapsed last year and thousands fled after U.S. and other foreign forces withdrew and the Islamist Taliban took over the country. Washington imposed sanctions on Kabul's new rulers, freezing nearly 10 billion U.S. dollars worth of assets of Afghanistan's central bank. This further worsened the country's smashed economy and forced many Afghans to migrate for livelihood. Many Afghans are leaving their homeland to immediate neighbors, including Iran, which borders Herat province for better opportunities. Mohammad Alam Amini is one of the destitute Afghans who has left his home in the northern Saripul province for Iran. Some, however, seem optimistic about the future of the country under the Taliban rule. Afghanistan has been facing poverty and a high unemployment rate. More than 22 million out of the 35 million population in Afghanistan, according to aid agencies, are facing acute food shortages. Sri Lanka's finance minister Basil Rajapaksa on Thursday signed a 1 billion US dollar credit line with India to help ease a worsening economic crisis that has led to shortages of fuel, food and medicine in the island nation. This came a day after Sri Lankan President Gotabaya Rajapaksa said that the country will also work with the International Monetary Fund to find a way out of the crisis. Sri Lanka's Finance Minister Basil Rajapaksa signed a $1 billion credit line with India on Thursday to help ease crippling shortages of essential items including fuel, food and medicine. The agreement was signed in the presence of Indian Foreign Minister S. J. Shankar and India's Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman. Earlier on Wednesday, the Sri Lankan minister also called on India's PM Narendra Modi, who stated that India would always stand with Sri Lanka. 
Sri Lanka President Gotabaya Rajapaksa on Wednesday said Sri Lanka will also work with the International Monetary Fund or IMF to help solve the country's economic crisis, setting a target of cutting its trade deficit by about 14% this year. He said the government was expecting $5 billion in remittances to shore up state finances. The president identified rising fuel costs as the most serious issue faced by his country. The island nation's foreign exchange reserves have fallen 70% in the past two years to about $2.31 billion, leaving it struggling to pay for essential imports, including food and fuel. Holi, the festival of colour, is celebrated with joy and fervour in India. As the country gears up to celebrate one of its biggest Hindu festivals after the COVID-19 cases dwindled to the lowest in the last two years, people across India thronged the markets for holy shopping. People across India thronged the markets for holy shopping as the country gears up to celebrate one of its biggest Hindu festivals after the COVID-19 cases dwindled to the lowest in the last two years. India for the fourth day in a row reported less than 5,000 new COVID-19 cases on Thursday. In capital New Delhi, customers, including children, were seen buying water and powder colours, masks, water guns to celebrate the festival. For the last two years, the markets were largely deserted with people choosing to stay away from the markets due to the pandemic looming large across the country. Markets in eastern Bhumneshwar city were also decked up with huge stock for holy celebrations including herbal colours, balloons and water guns. Locals expressed happiness that finally they can celebrate the festival with their loved ones. Yes, Holi is playing good. We will understand what Holi is doing. दो तीन साल के बच्चे तो जानते भी नहीं फेस्टिवल होता क्या है वो तो घर में बंद रह के हो गया फेस्टिवल जो हो गया तो एटलीस्ट आज इस बार जब होली हो रही है थोड़ा थोड़ा सा डर कम है पूरा तो नहीं कम है लेकिन थोड़ा बहुत कम है उसे ठीक है होली एंजॉय करेंगे बच्चे होली आल्सो नोन एज द फेस्टिवल ऑफ कलर्स हराल्स द बिगनिंग ऑफ स्प्रिंग एंड इज सेलिब्रेटेड अक्रॉस इंडिया इन अ सेलिब्रेशन ऑफ द ट्राइम्फ ऑफ गुड ओवर ईवल इट विल बी सेलिब्रेटेड ऑन मार्च 18 दिस ईयर Scores of locals and tourists are thronging the famous Almond Garden in Srinagar city of India's Jammu and Kashmir as it is in full bloom. The blooming flowers on almond trees indicate the arrival of the spring season in the Kashmir Valley. Located in foothills of the Kohima run, the garden has more than a thousand almond trees. Heralding the arrival of spring, almond flowers are blossoming into full glory at the famous Badam Wari or the Almond Garden in Srinagar city in India's Jammu and Kashmir attracting scores of visitors. The 300 canal garden is located at the foothills of Kohimaran and has an abundance of trees, flowers and cascades that make it a beautiful and mind-soothing place. Tourists were seen taking pictures and enjoying the view of the bloom on Thursday. I always feel really good about uh, spring seasons and I really love this season. So for me it's highly recommended this place to come and visit. We have seen that this year locals are also very interested in this place. They also like this place on the other states. They also like this place on the other states. And the role of the tourist map in the future will be more than the footfall of this garden. The garden is a preferred camping spot for afternoon tea and leisure time for local Kashmiris. The fragrance of these almond blossoms has brought joy among tourist stakeholders hit hard by COVID-19 pandemic as they now hope for more visitors in the coming days. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.
Thank <laughs> you. 